Hey yo gang, it's your boy Daya here with my first ever tablet review. Today we'll be looking in the Gaumon tablet model M106K Pro. Now, I've never actually done a video like this before, so please don't crucify me if I do something weird. We'll start by carefully unpacking each and every item inside. Now, the stuff inside are actually pretty well organized. It's a shame it's never gonna go back to its former beauty after I dissect each and every one of them. We'll be looking at each item one by one, and I hope you guys bear with me throughout this entire thing. After that, we will be trying the tablet for ourselves. I'll even include a little speed paint at the last parts, together with different drawing tips I use. Now here is the actual tablet itself. Let me just slip it off. It's 10 by 6 inches, complete with over 12 express keys and 16 soft keys. Though I wasn't able to show, we needed our anti-slip mask to prevent it from, well, slipping off against whatever you decide to put it against. It's got the pen jacket at the side and a large enough working area to cover the entire canvas on screen. Over here is the pen. Now what's special about this is that it's battery free. You don't have to charge it or add any batteries like that which is a huge upgrade for me because back in my old tablet I have to constantly charge it which could get really tedious and annoying. Over here is the pen case. I'll be honest, on the first couple seconds I was confused as to what this is, but I managed. Slip it in and it fits just right. Good protection. Here's this little packet. Inside is a bunch of pen nibs and a nib clip. If you don't know what these are, they're basically like the tip of the pen. If you ever break them, use the ring-like nib clip over there and pull the old one out. After that, you could replace it with another by easily slipping it in. So that's pretty convenient. This here is the micro USB cable. It's pretty self-explanatory. You use this to plug the actual tablet into the PC. I'd say it's long enough to reach around 1 meter. In this packet are two different USB ports. This introduces probably one of my favorite features about the Gaumon tablet. You could plug it in either your Android phone or tablet. I may be living under a rock, but this feature its completely new to me. Basically, instead of plugging in your PC, you plug it in your phone or tablet with the help of these parts. Unfortunately, since I lack a working tablet, I wasn't able to show off this feature. Though, I did try it on my phone, and I guarantee that it works, together with pen pressure. Heck, I even tried it with flip -a clip These are the gloves, also known as anti-fouling gloves. It prevents you from smudging and accidentally having grease on the screen of your tablet. It reduces friction and ensures that your strokes are smooth as all heck. Let's just skip through me trying to awkwardly wear them. And here we go. Fits just right, hmm? If you ever plan on bringing the tablet along with you, don't worry about scratching it. They provide this little bag thing to help you carry the tablet all around you. So that's all the things that's inside the box. Let's move on to the next section. Whoosh! So let's head on to how to install a tablet. First go on to gamon.net slash download and hit the enter. Look for the tablet model that you have. In this case, it'll be the M106K Pro model. Click download and it should redirect you to drive. No need to worry at all, this thing has zero viruses nor malware. Hover the mouse over the download anyway and watch that thing go. As soon as it has finished downloading, open up the file and click on the application. This is where the installing process should take place. As it is said on screen, make sure all drawing programs are turned off. I made sure I made sure to close paint will side before this. Plug in your tablet and you're introduced to the screen over here. Over to the side, you could spot the pressure test. You could see if the pen is actually working or the tablet in general. On the top of it is the pressure sensitivity adjustment if you want to like change some settings on how it should go. Over here is one of my favorite features. At the side of the tablet, you'd probably spot a bunch of buttons. These serve as a shortcut. 
and do different commands whenever you're up for drawing. You can easily change it by clicking into it and honestly just <laughs> entering what keystroke you'd like. I'm setting the key next to the one with the undo shortcut to redo, also known as Control y It just seems more fitting that way. The gear icon would obviously be the settings. Here's for language change, backup for the settings of the device, device for firmware info, and the about section. Now let's head on to the exciting part, where I actually try the tablet out. So here's me doing my first few strokes. Just from gliding the pen along, you can see how evident the pen pressure is. With the glove on hand, it's super extra smooth. I know people are having a hard time trying to pinpoint where the pen is exactly going, especially with the tablet not really having a screen. But really, give it a shot. You'll get used to it the more you use it. This tablet is fairly cheap and something I'd recommend for beginners. Here's me drawing a little brisk, if anyone actually still remembers him. Maybe one day I'll bring them back. I'm just still a bit unconfident with my writing skills, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. One day. The pressure also works well with different brush settings, together with the airbrush, from hard strokes to softer faint ones. Overall, this tablet is very dire approved. <laughs> God, y'all have no idea how much I hate my friggin' voice. <laughs> so, this is a sketch I've done earlier, and I'm gonna try to do some epic line art over it. It's supposed to be a gift for someone I'm friends with, Beast. Do check them out, they're super cool. Start with quick and steady strokes. By making them like quick, you wouldn't get the crummy line art style. At the same time, try and fill everything up. Don't leave any gaps open. It kind of makes it hard to fill in the colors if there's like some open space. Quick thing I love to do, whenever two lines intersect, I try to add more weight into it. This makes the lines more interesting in a way, maybe even dynamic. Alright, let's noom through this process.
So after this, we ought to do the coloring. I do this by using the magic wand and selecting the open space outside. After this, I inverse the selection. This is a much more quicker process than having to select everything inside. Especially with like, like the frustrating tiny gaps that the magic wand sometimes don't detect. After inverting it, I fill, I fill it in with a base color so I can clip the coloring layer on without a problem. Obviously, I ain't perfect. You might spot me making some mistakes, but let's not point that out in the comments or I'll feel bad. <laughs> Alright, the speed paint dia. Go, go, go! Now that we're done with that, let's head on to the shading. As we go through this, I just want to quickly mention that this is just the way I do my art. I doubt art has any proper rules and you could do things your own way. Honestly, that's what I love about art. It ain't like mad with the trippy ass rules and crap. You just do what you want. Back on to shading, I highly recommend you don't use black. I'm pretty sure you've heard of this tip before, but for bubbly, bubbly soft drawings like the one I'm doing right now, Black really wouldn't look good. For this drawing, drawing, I picked a more purplish color. Make sure your shading is consistent by knowing where the light thing is coming from. Usually, people make some sort of sketch to mark where, where the light is coming from, but in my case, I am too lazy. For that, I apologize.
after you've finished shading the areas, set the blending mode into either multiply or shade. In this case, I use multiply because it seems more softer compared to shade. One thing I love to do with my shading is to blur out soft areas. I believe this is referred to as soft cell shading. It's sort of hard to explain, and I ain't too big brain for that, but like, I guess nearer objects tend to have much more solid shading against the surface uh, compared to the farther ones which are more blurry. Actually here, this is a lazy example thing that'll hopefully help me explain. Notice how the shading turns softer the farther it is from the oddly blue ball. To be honest, I'm still practicing the soft cell shading style so I can't promise that it's accurate. Like the one I'm doing right now though. I hope that you've somehow gained some intellect through my extremely vague tips. Here's also something I tend to do. I erase some of the shading that's nearby the line art. It's sort of like my way of lazily forming, performing balance shading. This is something I'm also too lazy to explain so I suggest you search that up. Due to me now only realizing that the purple hue of the shading doesn't really go well with the, f the fur, the yellow fur of the character, I have now decided to impulsively change the color to pink, the shading, and also the blending mode into shade. I'm not sure, I'm actually not sure if shade is available in like other programs other than Paintlesci. Maybe they only have multiply, but yeah, let's just go with that. Honestly, it's completely up to you. I'm just being an idiot. <laughs> Whatever looks good. This one, the pink you, in my opinion, looks better. Though I changed the ones in the horns because that didn't look good. That one sticks to purple. So for this part, I will be doing the, the lighting. Honestly, it's not too different from shading. It's just that the lighting is actually coming from the light. I tend to always use yellow. Yellow always looks nice, but don't be afraid to experiment. Whatever looks great on the character or whatever fits the atmosphere much more better.
for this part, you can see me using an airbrush and adding more lighting into it. This honestly kind of looks better, in my opinion, with just some extra yet subtle lighting to add into the drawing. Alright, so here's one of my favorite parts. For the hair or the fur of the character, I love to add some, some extra stuff into it. Basically what I do is gather a soft brush, mainly airbrush, and then pick pick an area where all the hair is like coming from. From there from there I will extend it towards the edge of the fur to create some sort of hair effect. Again, just like for shading, don't make it color black. Make it like a color that's that matches well with the hair. Usually I go on to a color that's really close to the shading I used, so it has a reddish tone into it, which is pretty close to the pink shading that I impulsively changed earlier. With the Gaumann tablet, honestly, this makes the process much more easier. I could, I could lift the pen up a little, just slightly, to create softer brushes without having to change the density in the settings. This is pretty convenient for me, coming from someone that used to make art a lot on mobile and I had to like constantly change the settings just to make the hair look better. I like to lower the opacity since I don't want the the hair to stand out too much. I don't want to make it look messy. And I even use the airbrush over here to delete some of the to erase some pretty obvious parts so it look better. It may seem like I'm showing away all the effort I just went through, but honestly, I just love putting tiny needles like this. It doesn't have to be noticeable just something someone would zoom in and go like, wow, they added so much stuff. They wasted so much of their life in this. That's amazing. Alrighty, we're almost done with the drawing. One last thing I'd like to change is the line art. Since we're going for something soft and cuddly, making the, the line art brighter would help in creating this effect. I do this by selecting the color of the area and changing it to, changing it to something slightly darker. I want to make it soft, but I don't want it to completely fade into non-existence. I ain't one to make the best lineless drawings out there. I only changed this for the liner inside by the way. The other ones stay as black or grey, or at least something darker than the rest.
and with that gamers we are done i hope you all enjoyed like me painfully going through a speed pain process and with an unironic unboxing video i've never really done anything like this before so i hope i did all right <laughs> it's all right it's all right in my opinion i did okay with that in mind please check out the links in the description for Gaumon. It's a really cool tablet and I highly recommend it. It'll be sure to help me out on feature works, artworks, and animations if I'm really up to animating on PC. It's still hard. I'm still getting used to it. Moving from flip a clip, it's it's been really trippy. And I've noticed that I don't have that much big of an audience as I did before because I understand hiatus hiatus. You can't really expect everyone to be there, but I still get support. I still get support, and that's something that that's something that keeps me going. So I want to take thank everyone who stayed stayed true with me throughout these years, supported me, even despite this sudden change in like change in content. Thanks, gang. Thanks for watching. <laughs>